Fight number 13 for Mike Tyson. We're back in Latham. It's the same Mike Tyson. It is not the same camp. This is his second fight since the tragic death of Castanato on the 4th of November. This is the 22nd. And we're against an opponent who just might, 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 might be the one to test him. In all Tyson's early fights, well, in his latter fights anyway, I've said that we really need to see a better class of opponent. And I think we might have got that tonight in the shape of Conroy Nelson, who's been in with some, some good fighters. Conroy Nelson, Canadian, ranked number two in the Canadian heavyweight scene. As I said, he's been in with some good fighters. He, he, he's fought Razor Ruddock. He lost on a disqualification to, uh, to Razor Ruddock. No, I lie. He went the distance with Razor Ruddock. Ten rounds. He lost his next fight in London. I should know that. I saw it. Disqualification against Noel Corliss, the Liverpool boy, in seven rounds in, uh, in Bloomsbury. But he's been in, as I say, with some, uh, with some decent opposition. He's fought for the Canadian title against Trevor Burbick. Burbick stiffed him in two. But Burbick is a good... Burbick is a world-class fighter. So, if anybody is going to test Mike Tyson, Conroy Nelson is just the right sort of opponent at this stage of his career. The cornerman you might have seen wearing the, uh, the ring jacket of former world light heavyweight champion Matthew Saad Mohammed from a few years back. Tyson just looks awesome, doesn't he? This is, I say, fight number 13 of the previous 12. Nine have been won inside a round. In fact, I was there when he was <laughs> he was stretched by Don Halpin. Four rounds in his third fight. So here we go then, round one. Both boys in white. Tyson with the red trim. And Nelson with the black. Nelson, as I say, will try what well, has to use his height and reach to just keep Tyson at bay. Try and draw the sting for the first two or three rounds. Because we know how dangerous Tyson can be early on. And Nelson, on his bike early, guard held high, peekaboo style. I don't want to let it drop. And Nelson, Nelson can hit. Tyson needs to be a little bit careful this fight. He's been able to get away with liberties in one or two of his early fights because he has known his opponents cannot hurt him. This is not the case in this fight. If Nelson gets if Nelson gets an opening, Nelson can bing one in. Touchdown briefly there, with thanks to body shots. The right knee just, just clipped the candle. Oh, he's shaky. He's so shaky, and we're only in round one. And this is a good fighter. I can hardly believe what I'm seeing. Sit down, please, sir. Thank you. This is the trouble when we're crammed in alongside spectators at ringside. <laughs> Somebody gets excited and stands up in front of the camera. We can't see. More importantly, you can't see. Tyson can see. Tyson likes what he's seeing. Well, while our vision was momentarily obscured, Nelson seems to have recovered a little bit of equilibrium. In fact, he comes back with a short chopping ride of his own there. Gets through. But he's covering up very, very tightly now. If he was under any illusions, just how good a puncher, Mike Tyson was. Those illusions will have been sorely shattered. Tyson just falling centimetres short with that big arcing right. Referee just letting him get on with it. Just a little word. Don't keep it too close, boys. Well, Nelson, after... A real alarming wobble midway through. Might be getting through this first round, but he doesn't look convincing, has he? Tries to come back with a spearing lift of his own, but Tyson, left uppercut, gets through. And once again, Nelson looks a little bit confused, dazed and confused. That term might have been coined for Conroy Nelson tonight. In Latham, hard to think that Tyson... Ooh, I watched his pro debut, 6th of March, it's what, 22nd of November now. Boy, is he coming on, and boy, is he making an impact in the heavyweight division. Nelson, hurt, needs a breather. I think that punch might have been a little bit low, the referee allowing Nelson just a moment or two to recover himself. Gets clipped with a left on the belt. 
And somehow, well, the ref comes over, says, just keep your punches up. Kevin Rooney tries to wave him off. The referee says, I'm in charge here. OK, we're in the second. And once again, it's all Tyson. And Nelson, who was in deep trouble, is in deeper trouble as the left hook which is fast becoming a Tyson trademark, sends him down. The gum shield has been spat out. Nelson says, that's it, thank you very much. I think discretion, the better part of valour there. Conroy Nelson spat the gum shield out, walked back to his corner. Well, fight number 13, unlucky 13, I don't think so. 13 fights, 13 wins. At least Nelson got him into the second round. Tyson now observing the, the post-fight niceties. I thought Conroy Nelson, well, in fact, I wasn't the only one who thought Conroy, Conroy Nelson would stretch him, and he did, into round two. Took Tyson all of three minutes and 30 seconds to dispose of the second-ranked Canadian heavyweight, Conroy Nelson. Now, the only reason Conroy didn't get himself a one-way ticket to Belucasville in the first round is that he spent most of his time covering up while Tyson delivered one wicked body shot after another. I mean, you could hear those punches clear out to the parking lot. I couldn't figure out whether Nelson was there to fight or to give a lesson in survival tactics. Anyway, Tyson finally got to him in the second, setting him up with a sweet overhand right, then taking him out with a vicious left hand. Referee counted him out at 30 seconds of the round. Very, very good fight, experienced fighter, within good fighters. But I, a friend of mine from Canada called Davey Hilton was telling me about him and about me the clutch he tried to hold me. But he surprised me because he wasn't trying to hold the fighting. I'm going to tell you something. I think he was here to pick up a paycheck. The first round where he did was cover up. Well, maybe he was going to, he was a little leery about the puncher power. But again, that's you thing because you're not fighting. He took some good shots, but anybody else, they would have quit. Yeah. That right left was devastating. Thank you very much, sir. So now Mike Tyson is 13-0. All of his victories coming by knockout, and no bout has gone past the fourth round. So you got to wonder, when's the KO kid going to move up in class? If everything goes the way it's been going, I'd put Mike in the ring in, a, in about June or July against somebody in the top ten. But you must remember, once you break into the top ten, you can't go backwards. You can't beat somebody in the top ten and go back and fight you know, uh, uh, eight-round fights. Jim, 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 nobody's looking for Mike to go backwards. No, the sooner he moves against some real class, the better. I mean, this kid doesn't come to box. He comes to terminate. Tyson's rare talent had grabbed the attention of the boxing world and was drawing in the crowds. Yet at this stage, not one of his fights had been televised nationally across the U.S. More of Mike's early fights coming up in the next Tyson, Raw and Uncut. Mike Tyson! I believe he will be the youngest heavyweight champion of all time.